We could be we'd be fine like this, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it should work. Classic. This is classic podcast setup. Yeah. And yeah. If I mean, we could just like, like put that table in between us and yeah. put some like weed on the table, and then it'd be like classic Joe Rogan. Um, I've I've never I've never, never seen, seen a Joe Rogan experience. I've podcast? never seen a Joe Rogan. Experience. Yeah, his whole thing is that he meets with like professionals in various fields. Do you have but like he's like a high Kleenex set. or some sort of like facial tissue? Tissue? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. You not blow your nose in this house? I'll just not use toilet paper. Tissue. Yeah, we use toilet paper. Okay. That's fine. I can use toilet paper. I just didn't know if you like. I don't know if that was uncouth. No, it's we we don't. We we. Your noses? Like, what <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of like a racial thing. What's a racial thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> ah. Gongi, gongi, gong, gong, gong. How's it going, everybody? Zoinkmeister Patrick here, joined today by Zoinkmeister Adam. How are you? And today we are doing another podcast, which has been a while, uh, kind of. I mean, there's also that part two of episode 10 that I think I'll be posting pretty close to this one, but... I'm sorry. <laughs> Other than that, it's been a while since we've recorded a podcast. <laughs> I never did it. It's been sitting on my desk. <laughs> Honestly, there's a lot of stuff on my desks. I asked to have it by tomorrow morning. There's literally um, a desk on every single wall in this room, and all of them are full of things. They are very full. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this podcast episode comes at the request of Master Mostfa. Uh, so this one's for you, buddy. It was in uh, the last part of our, um, what do you call it? Wolfenstein, the New Order playthrough. Uh, he asked, can you make a video talking about your current top 10? Would be really interesting. And I agree. So I decided to do this episode with Adam. Uh, but in order to make it a catchy YouTube video, blah, blah, I decided to make it instead uh, each of our top 10. 20 favorite games that have come out in the last 20 years. Um, the whole point was to do this before the next generation consoles came out and potentially upset the balance of what we think of as a video game. <laughs> so um, it's going to upset. All right. <laughs> so I thought this would be a fun idea. Um, so the, the, the only rules are that we have to enjoy it. It has to be in order and uh, it has to come out since the year 2000. And we're including the year 2000. Paradox. That's what your avatar is. I was it was bothering me. I'm not I haven't seen Steven oh. Universe in like a year. I think that's Paradox. I'm, I'm sorry sure. if I got yeah. it wrong. No, I think it's yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's Paradox. Okay, so let's let's hop into this. Um so yeah, each of these podcasts is usually phrased in the form of some sort of question. So the question for this one is what is our favorite 20 games of the last 20 years? Um so let's get started. Uh number 20 <laughs> is uh so do you want do you want to list yours since mine's not actually pulled up yet? Yeah, yeah. So number 20 for me. Specifically, I mean the original game came out in 1994, but it was recently I guess re-released for Switch in 2019, available through the Oh, what is that called? Their online service. Nintendo Online. I, I guess so, yeah. Nintendo like Online yeah. services, yeah. Yeah, where you get the free any SNES game, so it's Super Metroid. Okay. Originally released for the SNES in 1994, re-released in 2019. Is no, I'm thinking of Metroid 2 is the one that they recently redid on the DS, right? Where you could, like... It was remade for the 3DS. Uh, it was originally called Metroid 2: Return Return of Samus, and it was re-released -re as Metroid 2: Samus Returns. Right, but that is not the game we're talking about now. We're no. talking about what again? Super Metroid. Super Metroid. Okay. Yes, it's um. And that's it's, never gotten an upscale port or anything? I mean, I guess it was ported to no, like, it's, so the No, it's never gotten. I wish it had a remaster of some sort. They did do a yeah. remaster for the original Metroid. Okay. But not this one. So before you say why you like it, I'm going to list my game number 20, and yes. then we're going to go into why Adam has his at number 20 and me. And so my number 20 is Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Legacy. Uh, and I'll get into that uh, in a bit here, but that game came out in 2017. It is a compilation of four different games. Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 1, two, three, and four, <laughs> which each came out in 2008, 2010, 2013, and 2016, respectively. Um, but Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Legacy is a single game that you can buy um, in different places. I think it even has a physical version, and it allows you to play all four of those games, which I, I can vouch for at least two of them. And I think being able to play them is just, a, it's a great experience, and they're a lot of fun. But we'll get more into that in a bit. So Adam, why did, have you chosen Super Metroid as your number 20 worst best game <laughs> my worst best game so super metroid is this fantastic beautifully sprite based adventure where i mean it, it metroidvania is kind of this like overused i yeah. guess term now these days because it's 
it's basically it's a cheap to make genre right if you're like an indie developer yeah it's basically like any game that's semi free roam and also 2d right yeah so super metroid has this beautiful i mean i guess the whole metroid um scene does but as far as this one goes this one i, I really love the atmosphere they like put in, in terms of like starting out with minimalist like i guess like scrolling text to start and your adventure starts and the the, the world atmosphere is fantastic and like i mean movement is kind of slow when you first start especially if like you haven't played in forever mm, yeah so i played the game twice through like emulation to a raspberry pi and then again on switch last year and both were fine loved them both i don't really know how to like deep dive into this without being like a 30 minute video on just super metroid <laughs> well just to be fast what makes super metroid better than say the metroids that came before it or the metroids that came after it what haven't they done better the problem with the metroids that come before and after them is that all the newer metroids suck and by <laughs> okay. when i say newer metroids i mean like other m okay yeah and um federation force Okay, but I mean, like, even the one I just... What was the one I said? Super Metroid 2? Samus 2. Samus 2. Um, or Samus Returns or whatever. Right. Yeah, so the issues with those two... When I say that the newer game sucks, it's because they tried to change it, like, mm. way too hard. And okay. the Metroid universe is kind of cut into two, where you have the 2D and you have the 3D. Yeah. And the Prime series is great, but that's, like, a totally different game. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, totally different. But so as far I, as 2D Metroids go... As far as 2D Metroids go, there's only, like, three. And you felt that Super Metroid was sort of the pinnacle of those? So Metroid 1 was remade into... Uh, Zero Mission, okay. which I think it's fantastic. It's yeah. honestly pretty much on par, but it's it's kind of like up to what your decisions are. Yeah. I think Super Metroid, as far as it goes, of the 2Ds is better than Fusion, uh, encompasses more of what the Metroid series is about, where it's like, you know, you have different bosses, like these cold, like, dank corridors. I feel like in your head, you, you also don't talk for Samus. Mm. You, like, feel... It's it's a weird it's a weird I don't know series that encompasses like the the daunting silence of like an unexplored corridor like you're supposed to feel alone yeah. but like you don't it's really yeah. weird like so you know usually horror games try to portray feeling alone yeah but this game just does it through just I don't know the magic of love I don't know I don't know how okay. they did it that's cool that's yeah. cool um so my back to my number twenty that was Adams yes um so my number twenty is again Nartish Putin Open Edge of Storm Legacy which uh, I put it at my number 20 mostly because um, I'll tell you now, it is actually the only fighting game on this list. It's an arena fighter, which isn't really like a big old air quotes here, true fighting game, but I never really got into true fighting games. And so um, the one that I specifically got super into was Storm 4, uh, which was the fourth Naruto fighting game I owned because I owned I owned Generations, 3, Revolution, and 4. But 4 was for some reason when I actually got like super into it. Um, so if I were to sp pick one in particular, just, you know, if you if I couldn't pick a collection, I would pick Storm 4, uh, even though a lot of people prefer 3 and say 3 is the best one, but both of those are in the collection. So, I mean, that's why I'd say get that, and it's uh, it's really good. It's one of those things where I think the Storm games are the best arena fighters ever made, especially for this last generation of consoles. And But that's not really a difficult, like, I mean, I guess there's, like, Soul Calibur, but... I don't know if any recent Soul Calibur has taken people by storm. No. So, um, so, I mean, the newest one, what, 6 just came out? Yeah, I think so. And people so. really liked it, but not for the... Uh, I tried it. I did not like it. Okay. Um, but it has a way too detailed character yeah. customization. Oh, and yeah, that's right. I remember that. literally yes. anybody. Yeah. Like, people yeah. were making, like, disgustingly sexualized yeah. squid words and yeah. stuff. Like, it's just right. weird. Yeah, combination. So that's the thing. It's like, it's more one of those things where I just never got into any more complicated fighting games or any even yeah. arena fighters. And so Storm is very simple. It's very easy to pick up. Anyone can play it. It's based off the Naruto anime, which I, I like. And so it just had a lot of things going for it, but it's at the bottom of the list mostly because as much of time as I put into it, it's very much like a nothing sort of like, it's more like a time waster game for me. It's my favorite time waster game. Like I, I loved going into it for a long time, but uh, it's always a game where it's like nothing about it. Uh, I've just never been a big fighting game person. So like it's sort of been the, that represented that whole <laughs> like genre of games for me. One thing I really like about the Storm series is I feel like they're one of the few games that really encompass what like a special move yeah means like they will cut away just yes. to show like a oh gigantic goodness. like yeah. some of the ridiculous. some of the ultimates are like yeah they 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 do like if you want to play a game for like cinematic value the like when you hit an ultimate some of those things are very impressive yeah like like in street fighter like akuma literally at the end of what is it oh which 
is it one of the alpha games where after you beat him as Ryu, he's like, you did pretty good, and then oh. chops the island in half, and that's yeah. his getaway? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, so of course that's not going to happen inside right. the fight. Exactly. But in Naruto Storm games, like, that, that happens. Can that can happen. Yeah. And they have that in, like, J-Stars, but J-Stars way too jank. I cannot, like, I will vouch for Storm over J-Stars oh, any yeah. day. I own J-Stars Victory Verse Plus, so, like, don't even say, yeah. like, we've played it extensively. No, we have. I'm not saying, yeah, yeah, no, it's like, I think Storm is worth trying. Not, it's and not, not an exposure problem. It's, <laughs> yeah. like, we've yeah. been exposed, trust no. me. No, 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 no. I, yeah. I think there's other anime games out there, and 4, I think, is the one most worth trying. Um, all right, so we're on to our number 19. Hilariously, mine is number 19 is Naruto Clash Ninja 2 for the game. Wow, that'll be a perfect one to get into. Um, but first, my number 19 is Wolfenstein The New Order from 2014. Interesting. Yeah, so if you could get into let's get into yours though, because we we're just talking about Naruto. Yeah, and uh, what, what year is that? So let me pick up my piece of paper. Uh, mine's a physical piece of paper list, by the way, guys. I have um, mine on my phone because it gets updated constantly. 2003. 2003, okay. 2003. Cool year. Next year was better, <laughs> but oh, okay. cool year. Yeah. Um, so that game does this weird thing where it is like way too complex. I have a game from 2003 on my list. Uh, I have various games. Most of the way my games don't actually break the newer, like past 2010. Yeah, I only have one on 2003. Anyway, sorry, continue. Um, yes. yes, yes. So I feel like Naruto Clash and Ninja 2 does this really weird thing where the game is like better than it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like I feel like it's supposed to be this bad is that the one game it's it's not even it, it's it's in an arena okay but it's not an arena fighter right you're constantly oh, that's a, like two and a half d one it's right? like two and a half d you're always yes. on the same plane yes as the person you're fighting but you yeah. can sidestep away gotcha and then like without sidestepping like the camera won't adjust yeah okay. you'll like sidestep oh, and then that will be like your new adjusted plane okay yeah like both you and your character um so that game has like way too much diversity and combos than it should for like a game of its caliber it yeah. like feels cheap it is cheap, and you can just, like, <laughs> literally, me and Harley... Harley was, like... I, I brought it over to his house, and he's like, what's this dumb game? This is stupid. And we started playing, and we, he was like, oh, my God, what is this? Like, this is this is absurd. Like, this shouldn't be this much fun. And I was like, I tried to explain it to him. But, <laughs> yeah, that game does this magical thing. Yeah. Where... Um, and, and it's post... It's No, sorry. Uh, it's pre... No, it's during. It's during the tuning exams of the original Naruto. Okay. So the yeah. baddest baddie is, like, God? early Orochi Maru. Oh, okay. So is Gara? Gara's, Gara's in it. Right yeah, there. he's like the main quote unquote villain of the, but like the strongest yeah. bad character is Orochimaru. Okay. Um, and like, it just, I don't know, does this really fantastic thing of being jank and way too good and like Shikamaru is like S tier yeah. fighter. I feel like that was the last one before they went full arena fighter, right? Because it wasn't after that like Well, because the... what they did is they ran a couple, Naruto went through this weird thing where it was the biggest anime on the planet. Yes. And everyone was trying as hard as they could to like basically dip their big toe into the money ring. Yeah. So you had the this series the clash ninja series which only it had two stateside on gamecube before it went to wii and switched to the revolution series yeah although okay. there were secret games that never released over here so there's a clash ninja 3 and 4 for the gamecube okay and then there's like many more games on the wii but they also did the naruto ultimate series on ps2 okay was that the one where's the one that you could play like four people at the same time in one fight that's the one that i remember most you could play zakamaru and he was like weird because he was like way too short for everyone and that was clash ninja 2 was i was clash ninja 2 yeah okay. but i'm sure he's done that in other games too yeah i mean yeah yeah because there's the ultimate ninja series there's that weird thing they tried on the 360 the uzumaki chronicles there's mm -hmm. a bunch of naruto i remember i played it on a gamecube and so that's that's all i remember it was it was yeah if it was the because they did this weird thing where each game like each console had its like weird specific version yeah like arena fighters versus like 2d like the ultimate ninja yeah. series was like what's that style i think the third and the third one tried to go for like almost oil paint style i don't know i don't know mm -hmm. I, I haven't played those in so long but they were on ps2 ultimate ninja the clash of ninjas uzumaki chronicles uh the storm series yeah which yeah the storm series were like the last which i believe that's how it crossed over i think the ultimate ninjas turned into the storm games okay and then yeah ultimate ninja became yeah ultimate ninja storm yeah and then it slowly from the storm it took off and then everything else died as Naruto fell from the ranks yeah, of most and, popular anime. Yeah. Now we have Boruto and that that's no good. Now that's no good. Um okay, I can't find whatever game I was talking about. Although modern day soccer. Am if I, I right? find it after the fact, I'll throw it over on screen. But um that was a game that I liked, but it's definitely not on my list anywhere. Anyway, um so yeah, so what makes that um so that's your number nineteen. What makes it better than your twenty, for example? What makes it better than my twenty, for example? So that one a lot of my games are based on like how much I like them. Mm-hmm. 
And that game in particular has this weird thing where every single time I've ever quote unquote whipped it out, it's quote unquote hit different. Right? <laughs> okay, where, <that's> yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. where everyone literally says like this game is like the epiphany of what an ugly game should look like. <laughs> yeah. And it looks cheap yeah. and it feels cheap. Yeah. But somehow that doesn't end up breaking your experience with it. It ends up becoming this ridiculously fun thing. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Um, okay, so my number 19 is, uh, like I said, it's Wolfenstein The New Order, uh, which I even said in my playthrough that that game was not in my top 10, because it's not. It's my number 19. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that game I have on here, uh, because... <laughs> Why do I have that game on here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember I went over and he showed me That's the entirety right. of the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> like so, one city. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Wolf, Wolfenstein The New Order is super short, but um, bes despite that, I put a lot of time into it. I've played through it at least three or four times now, one of which was on the channel. It was one of the first games I thought about doing on the channel. The only reason I took so long was because we were playing Doom and I didn't want to have two first person it games on the channel at the same time. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, that's a little, that's a little much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this game, I also really like uh, Bioshock Infinite, which is not going to be on this list because I was, I was thinking about both games for the same reason. Really? They're games, yeah, they're first person shooters that kind of are a bit generic in their shooty shooty but they do things outside of the genre to make themselves like stand out and be interesting. Like, so Wolfenstein okay. has the like weapon wheel where any weapon in the entire game can be dual wielded. Yeah. Ridiculous. Which is, which is so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. And then, um, and then in addition to that sort of just like fun, like twist on a first person shooter that both those games have, uh, both Wolfenstein and Bioshock infinite have these really crazy stories where I think infinite's just more trippy, um, and less like actually good which is why it's not on the list. The reason I ended up going with New Order is because despite how short New Order is, it does such a good job of sucking you in and making you care about the characters in the world and like what their goals are. And Delivers like quite to the succeed. punch. Yeah, that yeah. one is like... It's like, and it didn't take any time to do that. Like within like a couple levels, you're like on board with, yeah, Nazis are terrible. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, it, it's the thing is like, it definitely relies on those tropes, but it works. Like the, they make sure that the, like your instant, by level two, I was... I was like, I know who the bad guys are and I want them dead as much as the main character yeah. does. And just does such a good job of that is just being like the most simple heartfelt story. Um, and it just takes that and just like runs with it, you know? And so that that's why it's that's why it's lo so low on the list is just because the gameplay is very generic. It's just yeah. a shooter, but they do interesting things with it. I mean, I think it, I think it earns its place, but um, yeah, that's that's why it's there. Uh, and it beats out the Storm because it's actually a game I feel like I really have enjoyed. Whereas again, Storm's more of a game that I have, I, it's been more of like a slow burn fun where every time I play it, I have fun for sure. But I never had like those like high moments of new order where I like cried playing that game. You know, <laughs> it was like storms just like, yeah, no, it's, it's a fun fighting game. Like I, I enjoy playing it. Yeah, it's fun. Jack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everyone's wearing sandals, but it's fun. All right. right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Everyone's exactly. wearing sandals. Every, the entirety of the series. Yeah. If you're a Naruto fan and you never realize that, then go back. It's, it's literally. I think for Everyone. me, for me, it's not weird that they're wearing sandals. It's weird that I never looked at their toes. Like they all have them. <laughs> yeah, they all have toes hanging out. Like you don't understand. There's a lot of people who get kicked. Like, yeah, a lot. You're, yeah, if you're into feet, like Naruto, you can That's see the place for you. Everyone's feet. Yeah, like everyone, literally everybody. Even when they're drawn like with literally really low quality, and it just looks like a Powerpuff Girl foot. <laughs> like it's there. It's there. Um, so you want to go to 18 now? 18, I'm going to have to save in detail for later, right? Okay, it yes, is, but you could say the name of it now. It is Assassin's Creed 2 for the PlayStation 3, originally released in the year 2009. Yes, which I have this um, higher on my list, so we'll get to it when I get to it, so that way I don't spoil my thoughts on it. Definitely. Um, so my number 18, then, is Stacking from 2011. So Stacking... Stacking. Yes, Stacking is an indie game that um, it's a puzzle adventure game and uh i'm usually not a fan of puzzle games like that's the reason why it's so low it's basically for the same reason why storm was so low and that it's in a genre that i don't normally love but stacking i think did it better than anyone as far as like puzzle adventure goes because that game is all puzzle all adventure <laughs> like it's not it's no like like ugh, what's a, like other puzzle adventure games usually i think people think of like god of war or uncharted where it's like there's adventure and or especially like and Uncharted puzzle. and puzzles, right? <laughs> yeah. That's not stacking. Stacking is a puzzle game at its heart. It's just, instead of being like, what's the like hardest core puzzle game in the world? Like freaking, I don't know, Peggle. Tetra. Yeah, I don't, yeah I don't, or Tetra. Yeah, Peggle or whatever. Those kinds of games where it's like, looks. yeah, exactly. Where like the whole point of the game is it's just, or even uh, The Witness, I guess. 
um, which just kind of like you walk up to puzzles and then solve the puzzle and walk away. Yeah. Uh, stacking frames each puzzle within the story and within the like actions of the character, whereas every puzzle doesn't feel like a puzzle. It feels like just a part of the experience that you need to do in order to progress. And um, and so I love the game for that. It's just I've never had a game blend puzzles so well into a narrative than uh, this game. We usually when you walk up to a puzzle in a game, it's like, oh, we're in the puzzle now. In stacking, you can't tell where the puzzles end or begin. They're just a part of the game. It's just a part of the world and a part of playing it. And so that's why it's on here. It's just because it, it. I don't like puzzle games normally because they're just so dang puzzly. Where you're like, okay, it's puzzle time now. For the sake of being like, oh, yeah. that's interesting. So the right. defense to get in this tomb is a really like right. not very complex yeah. stone movie yeah, puzzle. Exactly. Where it's like any regular person couldn't move the stones, right. but I'm it's Destiny's exactly. child. Yeah. So that's why. And then the other yeah. way of looking at it is it's kind of like... um dishonored and that every puzzle has multiple ways of solving it and it keeps track of every way that you've solved it and so you can you can complete the game 100 percent by solving every possible every puzzle every possible way to solve it which i've done and wow. it's a lot of fun it's it's just like the game is so simple that you can't i don't think you can die or anything like it's just it's very simple it's just a lot of it's so entertaining and creative and different from every other game and so that's why it's on here. It's just like, it's a game that I love talking about and telling people about and like recommending just because it's it's a game that you, I've not seen an experience like it anywhere else. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's number 18 for me. Number 17. Number 17. What is Prototype it? 2. From what year? It is from 2012 for the PS3. Nice. Um, prototype 2. My number 17 is Grow Up from 2016 grow up yeah so what is what is oh, so what is your tell me about prototype 2 why you like it and then why it's here in so this place prototype 2 has done this really interesting thing where not only have they I, I essentially it feels like the same game from the first game right yeah but the protagonist from the first game is the villain of the second game yeah which is a cool i yes. love that choice yeah it's a great choice it always like has interesting narrative ties right and then uh one thing i always like is the whole like you know blah 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 you get to be the hero and then long enough you see yeah. why villains are villains have you have you um this is kind of related have you ever watched tokyo ghoul the anime a little bit here and there the second uh, this is super spoilers for tokyo ghoul for anyone hoping i'm to not watch gonna it. watch it so this is like your last warning yeah. super <laughs> duper spoilers if you're like driving and listening to us on the way home and like you can't fidget the buttons like hit it now this is your last <laughs> warning there we go that should have been long enough go ahead Patrick. it'll only take me like five seconds to say this so you could just skip like right ahead uh the main character from season one is the antagonist of season two okay cool yeah so i just wanted to bring that up because it's exactly what prototype does okay where it's Sweet. that same way so anyway <laughs> yeah uh, so they do this really interesting thing right where they show the the actions of what mercer did in the first game yeah where yeah he's like oh well i'm a gold everyone else should be a gold kind of and yeah he basically unleashes the virus and it goes horribly wrong and like right yeah uh, there's like mutant people now like everywhere yeah like, that aren't just like him who's like handsome with eyes coming right. out of his cloak don't they take it a weird direction though where he's like intentionally antagonizing you for no reason <laughs> kind of or like so basically the, the cool thing about that is that it's like new york right but split into like multiple parts like red yes. yellow and green section right yeah. and red section is like where everything started and it's like the outbreak is terrible there okay and like you're sent in oh okay uh to like you know like a regular soldier or whatever like a commanding an important soldier yeah and you end up getting infected by mercer like in particular for some reason and then like huh. yeah it turns into that like yeah i'm antagonizing you so you could be strong enough to beat me someday right. yeah one yeah. of those like yeah. why um but it did this really cool thing you of making you so mean about it <laughs> that game makes you feel strong yeah like the more you upgrade the game you literally and like not like far in the game yeah. like you encounter like other mutants i guess as well as like monsters and like the military yeah and at slowly as you just get better you start getting like literal godlike powers yeah. and eventually you get the bio bomb which... yeah and you can just you can turn people into <laughs> bomb. bombs um which that's is, like the coolest power it's ever. the grossest way to it's yeah, like they no. don't just they don't go boom like there's no, no boom at they, all they do the opposite they do that. the opposite they go <laughs> moob or yeah, uh, yeah whatever I, <laughs> they go come here kids yeah it's really weird but like the thing about that game is that you stab someone with your hand neck stabby tentacle tendril and then you could morph into that person oh yeah and then that's how you can like get past things yeah like if you pretend to be a soldier you can like sneak by soldiers yeah. which you don't need to be because you're totally like god powers but when you like i don't know you can slowly become like one one of the upgrades is literally being bulletproof which oh. makes 
Huh. All of the Marines completely just pointless. Yeah. Like, they are just there for cannon fodder. Wow. They're just cannon fodder. So the second you get that upgrade, they just ricochet off you. And, oh, no, I think they I think they, they just, like, hit you and they do nothing, but then eventually they can ricochet off you and hurt other people. So that is, wow. that is like, so far that I can think of a game that makes you the most godlike. A game that's not on this list that I real quick want to talk about as a counterpoint to your um, prototype, too. Yes. Is um, there's a game, Saints Row 4 which uh, they yeah. do a very good job of making you overpowered, but they do a very bad job of making that balanced, whereas the game's, like, not a lot of fun because the overpoweredness doesn't work well with the rest of the game. The one-punch man approach, huh? Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. Um, so I like Gat Out of Hell better. They do a better job of, like, balancing it. But in Saints Row 4, I mean, it was a lot of fun to be overpowered, but it the game was bad. <laughs> so oh. I just want to bring that up as, like, I think Prototype 2 is a valid choice. I've never played through the whole game, but I, from what I understand, I think it does a better job of using that. So why'd you pick this in this spot above, like, all the others? Um, underneath it? Yeah, what's, what's, why is it better than the other games you've said so far? Um, I don't know, personal preference. I, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't... The, the, I don't know how. It's kind of hard. It's, it's easy for, like, the one directly underneath it, but, like, as you get more into the list, I could see how it could be hard to be like, why is number 15 better than the five previous? Yeah. You know, it's all subjective. Okay. So... That's fair. I don't know. It just felt right. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I just was, I mean, you know, sometimes you might have a reason, sometimes you don't, but I wanted to. I don't know in particular. I won't for this game. There will be a game that's kind of like this game yeah. later on. Okay. That probably will right. have like a relative. Yeah. It's worth bringing up when it, you know, for each one, just in case, but yeah. Um. Okay. So then my number 17, yes, is Grow Up in 2016. Uh, so I have Grow Up um, because I think it's kind of, there's a similar reason of stacking, which is number 18 on this list. In just that it was super unique, and I love how much they, it felt like they added to the gaming industry with the fact that it was the first game that I played, which it wasn't even, it came out the same year as No Man's Sky, um, which No Man's Sky was... Comp- That's 16? Yeah. What year? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 2016, yeah. yeah. Um, no Man's Sky, I remember when it came out, everyone was really excited to have this like completely open game where there's no limitations. Oh man, right? that sure was disappointing. Yeah, so then right after, like a couple months later... Um, was Grow Up, which is a game that the whole point is there are no limitations. There's no map limit at all, except it only takes place on one planet. There's just no, like, there's no spaceships in the game. Yeah. But you can go over the entire planet. And not in the same way, like, Minecraft is open, because Minecraft is, like, too open. There's, like, no story. There's no structure. There's nothing to, like, accomplish. Like, there is an ending. They added an ending. I think that's solid. Um, But one thing I love about Grow Up is that you make progress all the time. There's no, like... You can mess around if you want, but that's just not the kind of game it is. Um, so the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think people might like Minecraft for the reasons I like Grow Up. But the reason I like Grow Up is because it, it's like this really cool open sandboxy experience, but it's directed. And that's just something I like to see in games personally. It's just a personal preference. Um, so the whole game feels directed. You never feel like instead of feeling like you don't know what to do because you can do anything, it's instead you have a list of so many things that you would like to do because you can do everything, <laughs> Yeah. you know? Whereas in Minecraft, I always feel like it's like, okay, I could do anything. So like, I don't know which, what am I going to do? Whereas Just Grow Up is like, feel like where right. It's like... Whereas Grow Up is like, okay, I need to get this done and this and this. And it's a huge list of everything, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so I love Grow Up. It's above stacking just because uh, I think it just added more where stacking is just kind of, it's a very simple game that it's just like, it's kind of, it's fun in, it's like, silly uniqueness whereas i really like grow up just because the whole time i was like wow they did this in a game crazy (laughs) it's real yeah stacking was like oh this is good like why don't more games do this whereas (laughs) grow up is like how did a game manage to do this like at the time that it came out so that's why it's there at number 17 above stacking um and i love it uh and i just played grow home on the channel and grow up's better (laughs) so (laughs) that's why it's on here and grow home is not on here um all right so we're at number 16 number 16 for me is the Specifically, 2002 GameCube port of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Nice. Okay. Um, were there other versions of that game in different years? So Sonic Adventure 2 originally came out on the Dreamcast. Yes. And then okay. the Dreamcast died. Yeah. And then it made its way to GameCube. And that's Battle. And that's Battle. Battle came with like a okay. two-player okay. uh, versus. And then it yeah. was re-released again on PS3 and 360. Okay. And then re-released again uh, through Steam. That's fair. Okay, so I have, uh, as my number 16, I have Nier Automata, which we just did a demo reel for on the channel. Go check it out. Yeah, that game came out in 2017. Um, but let's get into why you like Song of Adventure 2 Battle, and um, if you can, if you have a reason for why it's there and not anywhere else on the list. So Sonic Adventure 2 Battle has this weird like thing with me specifically. Is uh, I used to go to this rental game store Okay. with my uncle back when like, 
you know, those places existed before right. everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, so <laughs> back you know, when the, I guess before the online gaming age, basically. Yeah. yeah. So you show up, you know, you pay some monies, they give you a controller and you go pick out games from this massive library. Oh, you and played the, like at the place? Yeah. Oh, it's this one, okay. The, that era, right? That, okay. That era. I'm following you now. Yeah. We're old. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would physically show up to this place. Right. Uh, I believe it was called Video One. It was like not a franchise place. It was like a like a mom and pop owned place. Okay. This sounds like a, um, like the interca- internet cafe of video games. Yeah, yeah. So you literally like bookcases full, like six yeah. feet high full of games like that's cool going like two bookcases deep and like seven rows of them right that's cool. which i don't think you understand like the gaming industry right it's only been real from like what oh, snes onwards yeah, so, yeah. to gamecube at the time so that's not very thick yeah. like that's like three generations if that yeah definitely. and like most of the first two generations were absolute garbage we're like yeah there's six different wheels of fortune for nes <laughs> yeah so do you want to play tennis yeah, exactly <laughs> you know just tennis <laughs> just tennis. Yeah, yeah so i used to go in there NES? i used to go in there all the time and i would rent that game to play for my limited time uh because the intro can to... i just say it now this is not related donkey kong sucks i really hate that game it has three levels. Have you played Donkey Kong recently? I've played the original Donkey Kong. Yes, the original one. I'm yeah. talking exclusively yeah. about that. I have the original Donkey Kong on, I believe, the Wii U, and I also have the infinitely superior version, Donkey Kong 1994. Yeah, no, the original Donkey Kong I played for the first time, like, a couple of years ago, and I was so disappointed when I got to level four. Yeah, you only have, like, 100 meters or whatever, and, like, the first level is 25 meters, and the next level is, like, 50 meters or whatever. Yeah, and it's the last one is just the top. So dumb. It's so dumb, but it was an arcade machine. Anyway, going back to the old age. So what is so what so what 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 about this? Tell me more. So this game, right? So you couldn't. I mean, you could bring your memory card, right? But I was like, oh, whatever okay. age I was, right? Yeah. Young. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like that was beyond my facet of understanding. Yeah. And so I would show up with my you know money and my uncle, and we'd play different games, and he'd go play with like the Xbox section or whatever, and Makes I'd be sense. in. Yeah, I'd be in like the Game Cubes. Okay. And the intro to that game, City Escape, with the amazing song. Oh, is right? that in two as well, or is that? Yeah, it's, okay. It's, it's, yeah. Same. I just don't know. What are the differences for battle? Just just um for forward us. to the GameCube because the Dreamcast died. Okay, right. So but it I only mean, had like two years, and then it died. Did they add anything for battle? Or I think a multiplayer mode. I think that's why it's called battle. Gotcha. Okay, like multiplayer right. battle. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. So continuing on. <laughs> yeah, that amazing like City Escape and that song Escape from the City. Right, which is. is amazing yes. fed, yeah way too well of a composition for such like yeah i mean why didn't you just play pepsi man you pleb but sure yeah <laughs> yeah it's fantastic so playing that over and over and over again multiple times like of the yeah. times i'd go there like as a as a child that's as, a like, strong start a, yeah very strong start one of the possibly best starts to like a game out of nowhere yeah where, like they start like cannons up blazing yeah like yeah yeah that's funny i had Love a similar it. experience with um i used to go to a haircut place where you could play video games while your hair was cut uh, but you always wow. had to like, yeah, you basically had to start over every time because I, I probably the same reason. I mean, I don't think you could even like touch the console. Uh, so even better. Yeah. So I played Wind Waker on the GameCube there. Really? And I played the beginning of Wind Waker over and over again. And that is one of the most boring intros to any video. Yeah, game I was going to say it's a really long game. It's so bad. I hate the beginning of it has like the second worst intro of any of the Zelda. Yeah. When I finally like checked out a playthrough of the HD remake just to like see if Wind Waker got any better after the beginning. Fantastic after the beginning. Rewatching the beginning was like this game was so bad. (laughs) But then yeah, after that, the game is good. But like the game's fantastic. My experience with Wind Waker was like I never got off that first island. I don't even think I ever got to like the sword. Like, oh man. Yeah, that's. (laughs) It's one of those things where, like, literally the first thing you do. you're yeah. a little kid and, you know, whatever. And you have to restart every I time. I wet myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. So, um, yes. Yeah, so is there anything more you want to say about battle? Um, That about sums it up. I I did. I mean, there, there's like a race competition area okay. in that game, like the um, battle portion. Yeah. Where you can play as like any of the speed characters, you know, Sonic, Shadow, Metal Sonic. Amy somehow squeezes into the speed section. <laughs> um, She chases Sonic pretty well. She does. And, um. I remember literally, I mean, just like old fashioned, you don't do it anymore. I would, you know, be sitting there playing and someone would be like, hey, you want to play? Like, you know, two <laughs> player. And then like they plug in the controller. And we'd be, I don't know who these people are. Nobody yeah, knows yeah, 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 yeah. We never learn anybody's names because, right. we, yeah. And it was just a fantastic time. And hey, that's kid, like, you want to battle? Yeah. I mean, the game gets like progressively worse. That's cute. And like the voiceovers are really bad. But yeah. like, that's a game I've literally played. I think I own it four times. I think I own it on okay. every single yeah possible way there is. Except, Didn't I buy you? Um, yeah, and you even bought me one of them. Yeah, so, yeah, that's cool. I think I bought you the Dreamcast one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Fun times. Um, yeah, it's cool. Uh, do you have any reason for this being above or below any other games on the list or whatever? Nope. Okay. Um, what was mine? Yeah. <laughs> We're most, on... Most of my reasons, uh, what are we on? 16. Yeah. Are love-related. I okay. love it. Only a few are, like, superior to others. You don't... Yeah, and you love this just more than the other ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, I'll love her. My number 16 is Nier Automata. Yeah. Which came out in 2017. Check the demo. Uh, yes. I never finished that game, which is probably the biggest reason it's so low on this list. Quote, unquote, finished. Right. That, okay. That... I've gotten, yeah, I've gotten 18 out of the 26 endings. Um, so, yeah. But there's four main endings, and I've only gotten two out of the four main endings. Uh, so, yeah, it's a weird game. Um, it's a good game. Yeah. The only reason I didn't finish it, by the way, I feel like this should be stated, is because, like, another game came out that I was super, that I think is higher up on this list. Like, that happens. It honestly does. That's yeah. happened to me quite a few times. Right. So it's like, I love that game. It's just a matter of like, I never got back to it after I played the game that like, I like even more. So that's why it's here. But um, yeah, what the game does well is it's I, for me personally, I claim that this has the best writing of any video game I've ever played. Like the physical, not like the actual story, but like the, like an English teacher comes in and grades it <laughs> sort of like the best writing. Like the fact that there's portions of the game where you just sit there and read. And that is like probably some of the best parts of that game. I don't think you've ever played I Am Bread then because. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That also has portions. Where because, you sit yeah, there I was going to say the reading portions of that game are so good. Oh, my God. That's the reason you play it. But it's, yeah. it's the reason you play it. It is so good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, yes, Nier Automata. Uh, I absolutely love, love, love that game. That's just one of those games where. Uh, the gameplay style is unique for me as I've never played any other of those like very character action games where it's like you fight and you have to like counter and then, you know, all that sort of stuff, whatever, like Bayonetta. I've never played Bayonetta, whatever. And so hardly made me play both. Yeah, of them. it's very platinum. It's very, you know, it's a lot of action and fun. And uh, for me, it was very unique. It, it covers so many game genres. There's like there's a shoot 'em up section that you've probably never seen because you have you, to. You like constantly have a shoot 'em up, too. Like, I guess. No, little... like the game switches to a top down shooter once you've beaten the first ending. The second ending is like most of the gameplay is a shooter uh, where wow. it's a top down shoot 'em up like it's the game covers so much. I mean, that game is just such a crazy like and so many of the themes are cool. The character designs are great. The adolescent teen <laughs> boys. Oh. Like, I love the voice actor for 2A, although I don't really like the character design for 2A as much. Barefoot um, has bondos, huh? Yeah, I mean, there's so much. I love all the music. I didn't even get to cover that in the demo. I think I talked about it a little bit, but like I have like three different songs from that game on my like Spotify playlist of songs I listen to regularly. Like they're uh, they're not for everyone. They're very like tribal and weird, but like, oh, I love them, especially just because like I don't know, they fit to the game so well. Like, every time you get to a new area and the new theme starts and you're like, this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, this is exactly the song that should be playing right now. And so it's just, I don't know, a lot of things that game does so well. The only reason it's so low on this list is because, I, like I said, I never finished it. I mean, it's as much fun as it is, it has its problems. It's The level design is bland and jank and terrible. There's a desert that's literally just sand. Like, it's, it's, a lot of just it's sand. So much, it's the biggest map in the whole game. <laughs> yeah, and it's so, it's, you it's don't a, understand. Yeah. It's not like, like uh, what's that Mario level in Odyssey? Oh the one goodness, that's like a Mexican icy, desert, but icy like, desert area, yeah, it's yeah. weird because there's like clearly Egyptian stuff, but yeah. it's like Mexican. I was going to bring that up too. Like that level is probably like one of the worst in Odyssey just because of how much of it is just desert. But you don't understand the one the, in here yeah, is literally <laughs> sand. Yeah. It, with nothing in the middle of with the sand. With nothing in the middle. Like yeah, it's that, that level is so just good. sand. Um, but yeah, so that, I mean, as much as that, as cool as that game is, uh, it's definitely this low on the list just because there's like, there's some jank that's preserved and like, it'll, you know, it'll always be that way it's a good piece all right yeah it's it's um it's a cool game i think everyone should like check out but like it, even just playing the demo it came out exclusively for ps4 but then it like a year later got released everywhere else except nintendo so yeah so if you thought Which, there was no way why. for you to check it out in the meantime no you can definitely get it you on can get it now everywhere basically yeah, except um, nintendo yeah although Which. i would recommend at least looking up a plot story for near gestalt or near replicant just because the it's a direct sequel to those games so if you're interested in it, probably look up something on those games. But yeah, um, the reason I like this better is because Platinum th did the gameplay and no one did the gameplay for the original years. They're not oh, they're yeah. not the same level of quality at all. No. Um, all right. So let's get to our next one on this list. Yeah. Which... Um, in fact, now that I look at this list, like <laughs> I was starting to think that the top 10 might have to be a separate list. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. I was expecting the bottom 10 and the top 10 to be two lists. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm going to have to save this one as well. Number 15 wow. for me okay. is the 2014 Beauty Infamous Second Son for PS That's Station right. 4. Okay, so I'll get to my number 15 is Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, which originally came out in 2003, uh, which is when I played it on the Xbox. Um, but it has since been remastered in 2020, and you can play it on Switch if you're interested. But I've never played that one. So I totally forgot that came out. Yeah, so I have no clue how good it is on Switch. I've never played it. But I did play it on... It's also on PC, um, but I played it on the Xbox. Uh, so, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy is a game... I grew up with Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. I played a ton of that game, and I was very excited when I found out Academy existed, the sequel. Um, and so I bought that, I played it, and it was a very memorable experience. Uh, the reason why Academy is on this list and not Outcast is when I was deciding which one to put on this list, which was a long time ago, not for this podcast, <laughs> um, I watched a speed run back to back of Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy. And I realized that I remembered almost nothing from Jedi Outcast and almost everything from Jedi Academy. And I was like, wow, I thought I liked Jedi Outcast, but no, I just only played the first level basically over and over again as a kid. <laughs> Happens. Yeah, whereas Academy, I played through the whole thing and all of it feels super memorable, like, because it's level based. I mean, so is outcast is also level based but it's very um it's a bit more open it's really difficult to tell what you're supposed to do at any time it's like very much like discover like what to do next whereas uh academy is much more linear and so it's just for me as a kid it was much easier to get through and actually finish the levels now you've reminded me of this very special thing that can no longer happen once you're old enough okay of when you discover a game and then find out it has a sequel that is yeah. like something you cannot do in as an adult because yeah. by that point, you already have, like, the, I don't know, intellectual prowess to understand when a game's going to come out and, like, right. have excitement for it. Yeah. But, like, right now, if you were to somehow miss, like, Marvel Spider-Man. Yeah. And played it, and then, like, a week later, like, it took you a week to beat. And right. And the PS5 came out with Miles right. Morales. Yeah. And you were like, this game has a sequel? Like, yeah. that would be such an amazing feeling. And I honestly, I can't remember the last time I had a feeling like that. I mean, that. for me, it was a matter of, like, like I said, I grew up with Outcast. Like, I played so much Outcast, And I found out about Academy like way later so we're talking like like i probably found out about it like two years after it came out but for me that was like five years after i played outcast i mean <laughs> so i don't know i can't think of a time where like i was happily like no i can't i can't think of a time where what where like i got a game and then found out like the sequel was like uh -oh. this game has a sequel you yeah know? Like, where I wasn't waiting for it. Because it's not called Jedi Knight 3 is another thing. It's called Jedi Star Wars, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. Yeah. They dropped the three. And so I think that's part of the reason why I never knew about it was I was like, Jedi Academy, what is that? And they're like, oh, it's a sequel to Outcast. And I was like, it's, <laughs> it's the <a> sequel? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that game is a lot of fun. It's like super jank nowadays. Um, it's like very stiff and it's not the, like, I mean, Fallen Order has come out. So, you know. All of it's very stiff, and, and it's one of those things where, like, as much as I love it for the nostalgicness of, like, I played it as a kid, I don't think I would enjoy that game if I played it today. It's, like, way too stiff. I think, uh, I think now that I think about it, I did that with a prequel instead. Oh, okay. I played Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. And then Metal Gear Solid 4. Oh. And then was, like... Metal Gear Solid 3, totally different feel to it, right? Takes place in the jungle. Played it. Yeah. Smash. Could not believe it. Out of the park. Yeah. Fantastic game. Yeah, 3 is a lot of people's favorites. Oh, yeah. So that's, so yeah, so why, um, anyway, so Academy's on here just because it's above all those previous games just for, like, nostalgia factor. Like, I, I've thought about Academy so much more in my life outside of actually playing and enjoying the game. And the reason why it's so low on the list is because as far as, like, actually playing and enjoying the game, I don't think there's much there for me today. Um, it's just more a matter of, like, I've spent more time thinking about that game than I have actually enjoying playing it. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of why it's weirdly, it's in the middle of my bottom tier list. Number 15, right, out of 11 through 20. Um, so let's get to our number 14 then. Before we get there, I think one interesting thing that separates me and Patrick is that I actually play a lot of old games. Like, uh, what was the last? Let me look at this list slightly to the left. What did I just? So Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, I think the last time I played it again was like December of 2019. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah, so it's like very recently. Uh, what are my other? Let me look at this list again. Clash me... Ninja was, was earlier last year. Yeah. In like March. Yeah. Uh, I played it again. Well, you also just generally play more games than I do. I do, but I, yeah, but not based on like what's new or what's hip. I will like literally be like, I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 3 in a while. And no, then, like, I played, I played Wet like a year ago or two years ago. Yeah. And that game came out 2009. But I mean, like I regularly play my favorite games of all. Yeah, I, I don't... Like, once every, like, couple of years, I'll, like, pop it back in and be like, nope, still love you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really replay games very often. Like, yeah. I don't think... 
Like my number one, I've only played through once. Yeah, I actually have this policy where like, I heard just came out like three years ago. Where so. when I love a game, like even if it's not on the top, like I just love it. Mm. And it's like feasible to 100% or platinum it. Okay. I will do that and then put it on the shelf and then be like, you were a great opportunity. I will never touch you again. And that's basically what I did for like Spider-Man and junk. And that's like the thing. God I, of War. I complete like... games the first time I play them generally. So like most of these games I've completed. I completed Storm 3 and 4. I completed Wolfenstein New Order. I completed Stacking. I completed Grow Up. I completed, not an Automata. I completed... There wasn't much to complete in Jedi Knight, but I guess I completed well, it. Old games used to be really hard to 100%, like arbitrarily, for the sake of saying that they had a long... Right. So that's Now games want to be like completable for the sake of you saying you have a platinum so they could advertise it being like, I beat this game. Right. So I completed Overdrive. Like I think I'm like 99.9% .9 of the way through like Naruto Clash Ninja 2 only because it's like, play 500 fights because you only get 20 money each time. You need 10,000 yeah, money to buy this thing, so to buy this sound clip. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Yeah. I don't really like games that are like... Arbitrarily add, long. Yeah, add length for the sake of it. I mean, yeah. I get why they used to do it, but I would rather have a short, concise, well-built game than a game that has artificial padding for the sake of you having to play it forever if you want to complete it. EA. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so, Ubisoft. Okay. I'm sorry. To... I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Move on. I'm good. So our on. number fourteen then, Resident Evil Five for the PlayStation Three, but it was re-released for the PlayStation Four, and I don't remember when that year was because I didn't write it down. <laughs> okay. But it was originally released in 2009. Gotcha. Oh, that's okay. For anyone who doesn't know, I started getting into video games the way that I am today in 2009. So you'll notice a lot of the games I list are probably after 2009, and anyone that's before 2009 will be very few for one thing. And they will be like far between <laughs> because I owned basically two games that I played back to back over and over again before 2009. And then starting in 2009, I got into more more video games. Basically, I got into like playing video games, looking up video games, finding out what video games were cool and new and what games I wanted to play and would like and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of the explanation there in case you see it. <clears throat> but <clears throat> My number 14. God, the Yoda <laughs> grundle was hard. My number 14 is Sunset Overdrive, which I kind of just spoiled a second ago, but I've also completed that game. Um, that game came out in 2014, but I didn't play it until the PC release in 2018. And if you're interested in getting that game today, I recommend getting the PC release over the original console version uh, because they added one basic fix and... That basic fix is probably the biggest thing ever, but I'll get into it when I talk about it. So what was your number 14? Resident Evil 5. That's it. So why do you like that game and why is it there? So if I'm sorry, the PS4 version is the one I prefer. Okay. Uh, which was re-released in July of 2016. Okay. That game, which we're playing it on the channel, by the way, go check it out. Yeah. Um, is this really fun game that's both co-op fun, like couch co-op friendly. Definitely. Um, I guess it can rare. be online co-op friendly. Yes. It has like an interesting story. Yeah. Is like... Oh, it's interesting. Dummy thick fun for the sake... <laughs> yeah. It's like dummy thick stupid. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know what happens to that poor boulder and like, <laughs> what are you doing, Step Chris? You know, yeah. it's like very... Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. The, the gunplay in that game is fantastic. It has a excellent replay value because it incentivizes like a, a currency to get unlimited ammo weapons. Yeah. Which becomes like stupid. Like, you literally break the game. Sorry, it does this amazing thing where I feel like if your game is good enough to be broken okay. and still holds up and gets more fun, yeah. then you created just a fun game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, fair. without everything else. Yeah. So, uh, like you said, um, Saints Row. Yeah. That it became less fun because right. it was broken. Yeah. That is, like, the wrong approach. Like, right. Resident Evil, it's like you, you start out basically, like, you know, scrounging for bullets. Yeah. And by the end of it, you have so many yeah. and your weapons are so over like powered that they can shoot anything in one shot. Yeah. And you're like, oh, no, I'm still going to do this level again for no reason. Just yeah. because of the sake like the gunplay is so much fun. The challenge yeah. they present you like you literally can take out bosses in one hit. At, like once you get like that, certain weapons, that's the kind of game that I wish I owned when it came out. Like in, you said 2009, right? Um, Let me double check again. It's on paper. Uh, This game came out in 2009 and then re-released yeah. for 20. I wish I had gotten that game back in 2009 when it came out because I love playing that game every single when you first showed it to me we played through up to a certain point together um at your house yeah way before the channel um way. and i loved love loved that game and i wish i had gotten it uh just because i love it so much. it is not on my list um but it's one of those games where i feel like it could have been if i had had the time to put into it that you have had 
Yeah, it. I'm not gonna lie. The pl- playing that game a couple times through is fantastic. Getting the platinum in 100 in it is quite the task. Yeah, playing on the hardest difficulty seems a little dumb. Yeah, but... you have to play on all. You have to S rank, which is the highest possible rank, on all three difficulties. Yeah, and that's... then once you do that, it unlocks professional difficulty <laughs> where you like die in two shots. That's dumb. Um, and then. Like you have to S rank all those, and then you have to unlock all the unlimited ammo weapons. It is it it honestly is just a chore at that point. Yeah. Uh, like I found an exploit to like reek in the most cash, and even so, that still took like thirty hours. Yeah. Forty hours. Try that's trying to break the game to right. go faster. Yeah, that's but dumb. It was still fun. The entirety of the time was fun. It like never became like monotonous to not blow up things with overpowered weapons. <laughs> I mean, but that's at the fair. same time, yeah, like having to grind to not stay there for fifty hours is like. Yeah. How you know? I feel like that's one way you should never do that with a game. But one way, I one thing I will say is that for 360 players, you guys had the better experience because on PS3 it was going through that weird, you know, where like PS3 had its hair all different and wore like the really tight skinny pants and Ooh, buckled yeah. down and said, "No, I want to shoot with the bumper buttons." Yeah, terrible, yes. terrible time. Oh yeah. my god. So yes, PS4 rectified that. Switch the triggers. I believe if even if you want to be like a sadist and you want more punishment and like really pull on those nipple clamps, you can still switch it back. <laughs> Oh, if no. you want. Yeah. But for the most part, the PS4 slash Xbox One, I guess PC as well, I don't know, version would be the best way to do it. PC, you can't play couch co-op. Just All keep right, that never mind. mind. Yeah. So yeah. PS4 and Xbox One. I actually One. bought the game for PC and then found that out. And I was like, well, this is stupid. <laughs> 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 so that happened. Um, oh, man. So my game, uh, Sunset Overdrive, is actually my number one favorite game for traversal mechanics. I think it has the best traversal mechanics in any game. As far as like getting around the map, and all the stuff you can do, whatever. It feels the most engaging. Go check out the videos. They're also on the channel. Yes, I have a I have three videos on Sunset Overdrive. And the third one covers why I think the PC board is better than the original game. Uh, which is because in the original game, if you wanted to complete that game and buy everything that's in it, like all the costumes and all that, okay. and all the guns, um, it's the grind is like basically impossible. Uh, what you were supposed to do is the original game had this online mode that you could play with four people online, and that was the best way to get one of the currencies in the game. Because uh, there's two different currencies. There's money, and then there's overcharge. Um, and so the overcharge, there's no good way of getting overcharge in that game, uh, other than you were supposed to play this online mode. But that I don't think that exists anymore on yeah, the Xbox. I'm sure it doesn't. Right, because it's multiplayer. So for the PC version, they just made it so that the best way to grind money gives you an equal amount of overcharge. Like for value wise. I don't think it's the same actual numbers, but like the amount that they cost to like actually use them is about the same. So um, all you have to do is play the replay the challenges and the challenges, if you get the best rank, you can play the like speed challenge, whatever, and get the best rank on that. And it takes like 10 seconds and you can get like 10,000 monies, which is like, you know, a ton. <laughs> like, yeah, you know? yeah. So you can like easily grind up and get everything in the game within a re- like very, very reasonable time frame. Um, versus in the original, if you play the Xbox one, Money is easy to get because you can do the exact same thing, but um, oh my goodness, the overcharge is impossible to get in the original Xbox version of the game. So as much as I love that game, uh, I do like I recommend the PC game to a degree that like I would not recommend getting the Xbox game today at all. Um, but yeah, why I like the game, yes, it traversal is good, but pretty much everything else about the game is bad. The, the story is just a joke. Like it is intentionally just humorous. There is no actual story in the game at the all. The bad guys like Mountain Dew or something. Yeah, it, basically, yeah, it's it's really dumb. Uh, the character customization is a lot of fun. I think what that game does better than anything else I've played is the amount of customization the game gives you. Is like everything's customizable. The way you want to move through the game is customizable. The way you want to fight the enemies is customizable. The way you want to look is customizable. Like just everything about the game, it like takes customization and says like, what can we do with that? Like as a concept. And I think it does a great job with it in a lot of aspects. Um, the reason why it's here is um it is a game that I had a lot of fun with and I always wanted to go back to, which is one something that the other games on this list don't have. Like I never feel like, man, I could really go for that game again. Except for um the Storm game. But again, that's more like a little but whereas this one had like some really exciting fun moments where it's like getting to learn the navigation system and learning how to do that most effectively and you know eventually getting to a place where moving through the world feels natural and secondhand is like a really cool experience. I think it does that really well. So that's why it's here at number 14. So we can move on to number 13. Number 13 for me is, um, I mean, it came out in like, what, 1993, but I'm talking specifically about the 2017 SNES mini version of Mega Man X. Wow. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's my number 13. That is um, my number 13, yeah. My, my number 13 is Halo 2. 
Wow. Which I played back in 2004 on the original Xbox, um, but it has been remastered in 2020 for the Master Chief Collection. Fantastic. Um, that was one of Adam's previous ones, right? It's on the no, ups. It's us. So yeah. we're not going to talk about that one yet. We can't talk about it yet. Yes. So, but, so what is yours? So... For my, what did I just say? Mega Man X, right? Yes, Mega Man so, X. Yeah, I was like, what are we on? Uh, That's so, crazy. Yeah, Mega Man X, right? So I I played a lot of emulated Mega Man X on like my old family's PC, okay. like growing up when I was younger. So why are you so bad at it? So why am I so bad at it, <laughs> right? So that game is just hard, right? Yeah, that I mean, is it like, is. That is yeah. like classic hard. It's like fun, right? I've beaten that game several times as a child, but it's one of those things where it's like, I probably like put in like way too many hours as a child. Yeah. Where when I went back and played it with you on the channel, all except the last episode is on the channel. Yes. Um, like we had so much fun and like everything was like a laughably horrible time, but it was like still without a laughably horrible time, right? Of us just sucking. It yeah. was like a snappy, like well-made, beautifully sprite worked like piece of art, right? That I'm sure was like at the time of its release on the SNES was like top of its class. I'll take your word for it. But on top of that, <laughs> as we played, right? That rewind feature specific to the... That is so... The, that yeah, changes the game That changes for me. everything. It literally is like, oh, you've died, have you? <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful because that's, that's not how I remember yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I wish I had Braid on this list. Braid oh. is another game that's like all puzzles and a lot of fun, but you can... Whenever you die, you can just rewind. Like, yeah. That was the first game that did that where it was like very hard, but you could just rewind all the time. Yeah, I was like, that never happened. If it's yeah. fine. Yeah. So yeah, Mega Man X is like fun because it shouldn't be that. It's... The stake of it, when you look at it, is like it's like eight bosses. It can't be that hard, right? Yeah. But it really is that hard. It's specifically, so yeah. I, like we went in with full knowledge of how this game works, yeah, of the proper path to take, yeah, and we still sucked so hard, yeah. Like I'm talking straight vacuum at yeah. like the gay bar on foam night. Yeah. It was sucking. That's hard. crazy to me because I do not like Mega Man X. I enjoyed it so much. I That's enjoy our crazy. time playing. I think it's a snappy, well made beautiful like 90s platformer and i'm so happy to have played it multiple times so my favorite um, Mega Man game which i hope to play on the channel at some point but it's not too. on this list is Mega Man zx advent and uh, at some point we will show that off and i'll talk about why i like that game and i do not like Mega Man x but um i think that's interesting that's crazy i'm surprised it's so high like, yeah it is i i like it it's a really fun game that's so crazy to yeah me. i played so much of it i thought it was a fantastic game it's like one of those things where like whenever you whip out like a top 10 90s list or a best like SNES games list, it's always going to be there. That, you and know, like I remember having so many personal memories with that game. It's one of those things where like when we started playing on the channel, I thought we were playing it because it was like, oh yeah, all Let's Players like play Mega Man X at some point on their channel, I'm sure. <laughs> I didn't realize you actually like that game. No, I like adore that game. That's I think crazy. It's absolutely that beautiful. Is, that is news to me. It is like one of the, I think it possibly might be one of the most beautiful sprite based games ever made. That's insane. By far. I disagree it's gorgeous. and the move <laughs> the music aside from the title played... music is or the menu mu or the, the the boss selection the one that just repeats that you love so much that's da, the na, worst na, na. <laughs> that is the besides that one oh all gotcha. the music okay. is I thought like, you were saying that was your favorite I was it's like, like I'm gonna fantastic kill you. like oh that really presses oh, the sound God. chip to the I snes hate to that the, freaking it menu sounds music. so good have, Bam, you, have you played like owl boy Huh? Have you played Al? No, I haven't. But oh, that okay. one, I've seen pictures. It has beautiful sprite work Right. Well. That's, totally I mean, different that's feeling, like... but beautiful sprite work. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That was, uh, um, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, I think that is the perfect blend of difficult platforming, beautiful music, beautiful sprite work. It's a perfect blend of something. It's up, all right. It's blended, all right. <laughs> that launch octopus is no he, What he did with those tentacles <laughs> to me is like beyond absurd. Things that my girlfriend could never pull yeah. off. <laughs> if you have never, I'm not going to. You know what? No. I'm Let's not, move I was, on. The fisherman's I'm, wife. <laughs> Google it. What? No, don't. Google it in incognito browser mode. Go. <laughs> um, number Fisherman's twelve. Gong, gong, gong. I can't. I can't say mine because mine is Halo Two, and you have that higher. Yes. So we're on number twelve now. We're on number twelve now. Um, Metal Gear Solid Three Snake Eater. Ooh. For the PS Two. Ooh. What um, year? Uh, so this one specifically is two thousand four, right? The good Ooh. year. Like that was the year like Halo Two and like Half Life Two came out. It's a good year. Yeah, um, uh, I only have one 2004 on my list, but um, um, which is Halo 2. Yeah. But mine, real quick, is Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, go for it. So what, what, is, what is yours? Tell okay, so Metal Gear Solid 3, right, is basically this whole, like, anti-love letter where... Okay. Um, I guess that'd be the wrong term. Um, totally lost my train of thought. Sorry. What was... Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 and why do you Metal like Gear it? Metal Gear Solid 3 and why I like it. So I played this game late i played the uh, mgs2 and then mgs4 and then went back and played mgs3 
Okay. And I thought it was such a fantastic experience that I missed out on. Mm. The music is fantastic. I'm even, even like the song Snake Eater, like fantastic to listen to. Yeah. But like the drama that they've created, it's like a perfect blend of like somehow like jungle, like communist, like anti-Russian Cold War regime. It like encapsulates like spy warfare, right? That's like the entirety of that game. Yeah. And it does it with the Metal Gear formula, but totally steps away from like the cyber yeah i mean it's still like ridiculous but it's I still think ridiculous it's... yeah ocelot's over here like juggling revolvers like and <laughs> yeah. you're fighting men who control bees like right pointless yeah. complete like nonsense like oh yeah the boss is so strong she gave birth on the battlefield and, and kept fighting it's like yeah. what like no yeah. like that has to be a, like it's very uh, fantasy but much less sci-fi but yeah it's 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 the only reason it's not fantasy is because all those things still happen and it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's dumb it's stupid yeah. it's so dumb it's, it's not like magic where it's not explained right it's, it's weird. like yeah like no that really happened they're just tough about it like it's just <laughs> stupid they just figured it out yeah they just figured it out turns out if you're hot and rugged and it's just like a fantastic game that has like various ways to approach it because you absolutely can go guns a blazing or complete stealth but there's like areas where you're basically like punished for it yeah and and for your certain decision we're like you know oh yeah i'll just go in guns a blazing they'll like turn and i'll just shoot you immediately like okay that doesn't work yeah like so i have to go stealth here but like you know i don't know classic metal gear turned all the way up and like that game is kind of like a sorry note from hideo kojima because huh. everyone was very disappointed with Raiden's oh, appearance in Metal Gear yeah. Solid 2. Right. So, like, he went for, like, an Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, Rambo, like, yeah. you know, all the, the famous 80s buff guys, like, yeah. all ripped into one beautiful yeah. mulleted man. It's so, crazy the number of games you play as Solid versus other characters. Like, it's, uh, like, the only yeah. one where you play as, like, boss. Naked Snake, yeah. 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 Yeah, Naked Snake, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And it's, like, fantastic. Yeah. I think if you haven't played it and, like, two or four is like your favorite game or even five it might like change your mind it's a really good game yeah it's cool it's, it's been a, remastered like several times so it has an entire section devoted to you listening to a song and doing nothing else other than pushing up on a controller to climb a ladder and it's like a really long ladder <laughs> i'm talking like the bottom of a missile silo <laughs> ladder Snake eater. and yeah. like the best part is like it's such a good song and the atmosphere of the situation you're doing is so like one-to-one where it's like, we might as well have you listen to this song. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like you're sitting in a room holding the up button for three minutes uninterrupted. <laughs> it feels like you're listening to just like, I mean, you're like, oh, this is the sex for my ears yeah. button. Uh, like, no, yeah. Oh, no, please don't. Fisherman's Wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go okay, ahead. so. I'm sorry, Fisherman's Wife. Google you it. keep saying that. I don't like it. My number 12 is Middle it, Earth. It's different. Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, so that's interesting to me because that's like a recent game that I like don't remember being too good. I was say, I completed it. Um, but yeah, 2014, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Um, I remember at the time I really liked Assassin's Creed games because Assassin's Creed kind of introduced me to... It was like one of the first games that I played that I, I felt like I discovered instead of being just like the popular game. Because I think, I mean, I played Assassin's Creed. I'm talking about Assassin's Creed 2, which like, you know, I think is like everyone knows about that game now. Yeah. But when I found out about it, it wasn't like, it didn't feel like everyone was going to be into it the way that they ended up being. I still question if people are. I think it's one of those series where people say like, oh, this is one of the best games of all time. And yeah. they like have never played it. Like, yeah. I, I don't, feel like it's, it's one of those. Right. So that was the thing was like that. So then that style of game became this like thing for me where i was like oh my goodness like video games right they exist uh, so and they're like this right. just like this so should, should middle i'm never gonna mordor, get burned out of this <laughs> <laughs> middle or shadow mordor i felt like at the time was the best to do that style where it was like supposed to be sneaky and you could do a lot of it sneaky but then like when things got bad there was combat and the combat was very like and it was counter- like batman right yeah it was based off of, like the batman style which was like an improvement of the Assassin's Creed style, which was you could hit people, but like there was like the counter system you had to watch out for and stuff like that. And so at the time, like Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor was just like, it has the fastest crouch run of any game ever. <laughs> like, which like, is great. Yeah. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, I think is probably the fastest stealth game I've ever played. Where <laughs> Like you just like sprint across the battlefield, but like in stealth. <laughs> yeah. Which and is, so it's just, I don't think you understand, like really think for a second, how like, like sliding, like, you know, warming your way, like past the guard. Yeah. Only for him to turn around because you were warming so slow. Yeah. It makes the entire like last 30, the 30 seconds you've been crawling. Right. But the entire five minutes of stealth you were just doing. Right. Pointless. Pointless. It's so annoying. Yeah. So, it's so like in this game, it's like speedy stealth. Yeah. The whole time you're like, that guy's like on the other side of the field, but no one's looking. So <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and no one hears you and it's great i love Objects it so in much the mirror maybe faster than yeah maybe. so it was yeah. like i felt like it was the my favorite stealth game I th i'm sure there's other stealth games thank that you, have done you. stealth really well especially if you're a big fan of stealth and you like that slow plotting stealth this is not that at all for me this was like what i always wanted stealth to be <laughs> which was like sprinting full speed across a battlefield to like chop someone in the neck before they could turn around so i really love that game uh, i think if i were to play maybe like ghost of tsushima today that might do it better ghost of tsushima it's I just kind of spoil it right now, right? Uh, not the game. I'm not going to spoil the game. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, wow. That's uh, like my games of the year, 2020. Okay. It currently holds best game Wow. for me. And uh, the only thing I think that can dethrone it right now is Miles Morales in a few days. Oh, so yeah. So we will see. Yeah. So that's the thing. Ghost of Tsushima is, if I had the time to play it and I had played it, it could replace this on my list as being like my favorite of that kind of game yeah. where it's like combat-y but stealthy and all that sort of stuff. But I haven't played it and so it can't be on this list. And so for me, the, the last game that I played that did that super well and I super enjoyed was Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. And uh, and it's also takes place in Lord of the Rings universe, although that doesn't it doesn't add to the Lord of the Rings universe, but the Lord of the Rings universe sort of adds to it sort of thing. Where like a lot I wasn't really into Lord of the Rings before I played this game. Like this game is like part I of the reason I still am not. This game's pretty much the reason I decided to read the books. Like just because I thought it, I realized how cool the universe could be. And the Middle of Shadow of Mordor, I feel like is probably even cooler than the books present. The universe but um it's just something know. it's just me and harley have talked about it i told you that harley went on a on a quest where he rewatched all of them i did not know that and he didn't like any of them really yeah he said it was just a bunch of hairy men with feet hair just walking through forests with a whole bunch of dialogues bad guy being giant eyes it was just a whole lot of nothing that's crazy just a bunch of like bunch of hairy men and I feel like covered should, in dirt and then one handsome guy every so often i feel like you should give it an opportunity it's a really crazy story i mean it's I don't think it's bad. I'm just telling you like a secondhand, no. like comedic approach to the way Harley described yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, no. Because it's, hilariously, the way I'm describing it isn't far off from how he described it. It was pretty much a one-to-one -one of how he described yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, so if you read the book, there are long periods of the book where they are just walking. And the movie does a very good job of having long periods of time where they are just walking. And you're like, wow, this is surprisingly accurate to the book. <laughs> yeah, but, but I feel like that's the part of movies people don't want to be accurate. You right, know? exactly. And so that's like, I don't know. It's one of those things where, yeah. And they walk sexy, like Ola said. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, don't it's know. just, yeah, no, definitely. The majority of the movie is two, like, powerless people who are short and small and can't do anything. Don't forget, they're hairy feet. And they have hairy feet. They have hairy feet. And they are taking on, I mean, in the book, that doesn't come up very often. But yes, you see it all the time in the movie. If you're like Naruto, <laughs> those feet so are always there. Yeah, the whole point of the movie is they just the fact feet. that, like, it's that unreasonable, like, unsurmountable odds. And uh, the, the protagonists carry on despite every, I mean, it's the ultimate. Hilariously, that is also the plot to Naruto. It is all this is the ultimate story in Perseverance, I feel like. But um, but that's not the point. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, on the other hand, is not that. You like wreck shop. And uh, I think it's really cool. They added the Nemesis system, which was really unique. Uh, and I think it did a really cool thing for just having these like unique enemies that you fought and different ones had like different things that they could counter. And like, did you play Shadow of War? No, I never played Shadow of War. I, I played the demo, but I haven't played the full game. And oh. uh, it was just too much. I tried playing the demo and it like it made the game way too big for me. <laughs> I was like, this is a, this is a bit too much for me. So oh. I, I didn't really like it. And I could like talk about my thoughts on Shadow of War if we ever play the demo on Demo Reel. So I won't get into it too much. Yeah. But yeah, so I love Shadow of Mordor. That's kind of why it's so Go high on the Go check out the PS3 port. Just like a video of the PS3 port. Yes. Oh it my goodness. So or the Xbox 360 port. Or the three, 360 is probably even worse. Go ahead and try. Yeah, yeah try the 360 the, port. Specifically, the Super Best Friends play uh, Shadow of Mordor. I think it's on the 360. I don't remember. But it's it's an amazing, incredible video where uh, that's that's so worth watching. That was the worst backport ever. You don't understand. <laughs> they like forgot the game. Yeah. Like, no, it was. Oh my like goodness. Like you look at a mountain and there's it's just not there it's just, it's just there. gray it's just a blob of oh it. and that was also one of the first games along with um the order 1886 which is also not on this list that had a very good cinema or picture mode where you could pause the game and like take photos of the game which so, everyone should have that why doesn't every game have I don't that know. but yeah that was one of the first games to do that very well uh, every anyway, three-dimensional game should have it yes yeah, so that was my number 12 <laughs> and now we're on to our final lists of or i guess selection of this list as yes 10 this through is our number 11 number 11 mine goes to the 20 18 nice playstation 4 game nice marvel spider-man wow 
My number 11 is actually the opposite. It goes way back to 2005 with Pandemic's Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh, chef's kiss. <laughs> Fantastic. I played it specifically on the original Xbox. So let's talk about Marvel Spider-Man. Marvel Spider-Man, right? is this fantastic bundle of absolute fun that starts from the first cutscene. It literally starts yeah. with Peter, like, putting his pants on or yeah. something. Like, telling, like, Mary Jane, like, yeah, I'll be a pathetic guy later. And yeah. then, like, literally, mid cut, like, in, in engine, jumps out his window, and then it's like, press R2 to swing. Yeah. And they start immediately with showing you how well this, like, the game's traversal mechanics go. Yeah. It's by the same guys who did... um. Sunset Overdrive, but yeah. this one has like a different feel to it, of course, because you're swinging and running up buildings. Yeah. But you run up buildings, you're swinging around, you immediately go stop crime. It is like a beautiful, like it's a fun game to play. Like I, I understand that like the big boys came out that year too, like God of War and uh, Red Dead Redemption too, right? I think that is probably my favorite cutscene to gameplay transition of like any game I've ever played. It's so good. Where you like, I remember when it happened, you're like, oh, I'm playing. Now. Yeah, you're like already, <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. It's I was already started. I was blown away. The game looks fantastic. I, I honestly, I platinumed it. I, I had to, I can't wait for Miles Morales. And spoiler, like I'm gonna give you like five seconds while I'm explaining that I'm about to give you spoiler to like not listen for like the next couple seconds. Oh, this is spoiler for what? Marvel Spider-Man. Oh, okay. Yes, is that so. they do this really interesting thing that when you start out, Doc Ock is like your pseudo father figure, honestly. Yes. They do this beautiful thing, right? Where you slowly see his like descent into madness and you see it like physically, not physically, you are like emotionally affecting Peter and by uh, proxy you. Because for the most part, yeah. unlike like, you know, poorly written villains, you like slowly see, and you know, it's not his fault too. That's like the worst thing. Yeah. Is that yeah, you've seen everything he's come from. He has like the motivation to be bad, but he's clearly like not trying to be bad. Right. It's but, just like, kind of yeah. Yeah, but the things that are happening to him are happening like on like, you know, a psycho imbalance level. Right. It's, like, it's like stuff that like could happen to anyone, but it like really sucks and it doesn't help that on top of that he like <laughs> yeah. he has to deal with a lot. <laughs> he has to deal with a lot, and it's one of those like one bad day can totally change something. And they also like do specifically tell you that like the the arms like screw mess you with up. your brain. Yeah. yeah. So, and then on top of that, like, I mean, you lose a lot in that game, like a lot, like you basically yeah. jeopardize while you're like, you know, relationship uh, with like Mary Jane, you like lose your pseudo father figure right. because he turns evil. I think that's Su safely the best Peter Parker. Game. Oh yeah. I like, think it's just easily. the best Peter Parker. Like probably at all. Yeah. He's a, um, yeah, that was a great, I mean, all the voice acting in that game was incredible. It was the only time I've ever liked Mary Jane in a story. They did this fantastic thing where they literally made Harley question whether or not his life was useless or not. <laughs> because he was like, dude, me and Spider-Man are like the same age. <laughs> and he's like, this guy's a superhero and a scientist. <laughs> he's like literally. And he still doesn't yeah, have it all he, together. Yeah, he has, he's balancing his like, like eight to five job and his relationship and being a superhero like and being a loving caring he because he his free time like think about it he's juggling his job like as a professional non-professional scientist yes he is juggling being the superhero that protects new york because we're the hell of the avengers he, <laughs> he juggles really his, it's in that game but yeah they never show up <laughs> yeah he, he juggles trying to like be a hero and like help doc ock with his stuff while trying to like keep mary jane and on top of that this guy has the audacity to lovingly help charity work right that's like, his yeah his is free time is uh working at a homeless shelter. an amazing young man and like this is like year eight i think they tell you spider-man yes year eight which yeah. sounds like oh like he, you know he's a professional it's like no dude he started when he was like 15 or something like 16 yeah. he's been i mean yeah he's been for like a long time yeah but he's still like a young man which is very interesting because you'd think at this point when i mean usually you see origin stories for guys yeah you don't get to see like oh he's already been doing this he knows what to do already right. and still have like narrative plot to struggle with is a fantastic approach I, mm, mwah, and it was mm. a great explanation for how you can fight so many people at the same time as spider-man like yeah it would not make sense if it was an origin story and also i can beat up 10 guys at the same time yeah like, like <laughs> oh you, you know rhino and like yeah <laughs> like, yeah it's like, like what why am i so you, good at this you guys are all here huh and i'm yeah. really fending yeah. all of you off yeah and then oh man they just oh Mm, good game yeah good game <laughs> um if you have played the game have you, you seen... didn't play the dlcs you need to go back and play them before you play miles morales yeah i need to do that on the channel so you've seen the the remaster for the playstation 5 i think it is for the uh, miles Sp Mar marvel spider-man where they went ahead and just changed the actor yeah weird right what did you think of that because i i didn't care because it won't change how you view the game. It will only bother you if you've already played the game. 
And yeah. you like fell in love with that Peter Parker. Well, so he's like facially. Yeah. So I felt like the like the new actor felt more expressionless, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what was going on there. But I don't know. I didn't. I saw like clips and stuff. I looked at both and I was like, I don't care. I already did it. Like, I'm not going to go back. Yeah. I mean, Harley was bothered by it. He's like, he looks ugly now. Well, no, I'm I mean, like, yeah. well, you, I mean, what did you think? Well, he was handsome before? Right. But I mean, if you're <laughs> I'm, like, if we're saying like, oh, if you're going to pick it up, should you wait for the PlayStation 5 or do you like play it on the PlayStation 4? And um, I mean, this could easily, like Adam said, be just a preference thing where um, it could be if you've never played the game before, you won't know. Like, it'll be just thing. you, you might fall in love with shouldn't. it. And I believe both are playable on PS5. OK, the I yes, I think if you pop in your PS4 disc, yeah, it will be the PS4 version running on super duper fast mode. OK, but if you pop in the PS5 remastered version, it will be the PS5 remastered version. Gotcha. So that's the thing. So as far as like Peter Parker, the actor who plays him, um, from what I saw of the one cutscene that they showed, which was him talking to Doc Octopus, uh, I could not read the guy like facially as nearly as much, but it could just be that I didn't have as much time to get used to him. So it could be that if you just played the game from the beginning on the PlayStation 5, you might not like the actor from the PlayStation 4 and you might totally disagree with this. But I thought I could give that warning, I guess, just in case it actually was significant and like everyone is on the same page about this. It could be that it's not. I would definitely like, you know, I, I have no clue. But um, yeah, when I was watching the cutscenes, I was like, oh, it's weird that they changed the face. But more than that, it felt like they didn't do as much with it. Like I, I <laughs> just the new actor didn't feel like he fit in into the scene as well or whatever. So their explanation was that they did it so that the lip syncing matches up with the spoken dialogue or something. Okay. It's a dumb reason. It like doesn't work. Like, yeah. And, but I can't, I don't know why they wouldn't. Do they change the voice actor too? Is that what the deal is? I don't know. That's so weird. I don't know. That sounds so, because you'd have to re-record every single line. I can't yeah. imagine like just the cutscenes would have a different voice right. actor. And so that's the thing is like, I don't know. So anyway, the original one, there's a lot like the, like Peter Parker is the main character of the, like, like his performance in the game is like a lot of what sells that game. And so Fantastic. the fact that they, right. The fact that they changed that actor, like there is a good chance that that doesn't work as well. Like what made the game so good was that actor yeah so. because i'm not gonna lie with the one thing that separates spider-man from a lot of other heroes is you do not see any of his facial expressions aside from his eyes and they all they do is change shape and size yeah so and then i don't even think they do that in in the game like no. i think that's like for comic purposes yeah like deadpool yeah so like selling the emotion of that character outside of like just talking is entirely peter parker's face so right that might have some yeah so some. keep that in mind but that is our top 11 through 20 games. What was Sorry, your... I haven't said yeah, my I was like, yet. I was like, hold on. Oh my God, you put everything away. So I thought, I thought we were done here. My number 11 is Pandemic's Star I, Wars. I didn't, I did I just put two pieces of paper next to each other. I have no idea why. Pandemic's so I put them away. <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront 2 for the original Xbox is what I played it on in 2005. Fantastic. This game has since been remade by EA and that game is not the same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's I would say not what I'm talking a about. A remake isn't even that's I don't know. I don't know that's what, you, what they you call stole that. the name and just made a different game. They just ran with it and it I, essentially it did not work at the beginning. And I mean, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the what was that? 2016? 2015? No, 20... Oh, maybe. I'm the thinking second. about... The complete edition came out yeah. just like last it's, year. It's good but, now. They yeah. patched it. It's good now. Yeah, so um, I play. I played on the channel EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2, and the story sucks, but, like, the game is all right. Like, it's fun. It's playable. It's, like, totally good. Like, a lot of people really enjoyed that game, and I think more power to them. Like, I think they, they fixed it, and it's a good game for multiplayer purposes. Single player purposes, no. That game's still bad. Uh, but <laughs> that's not the game I'm talking about. Moral of the story. The game I'm talking about is Pandemic's Star Wars Battlefront 2. Completely unrelated. Fantastic. Yeah, which I probably have more hours in that game than any other game ever. Uh, because when I got that game in 2005, okay, it was like pretty much the only game I ever played until 2009. So like four years. Oh my God. <laughs> Basically That's like- That's a lot of hours. Yes. I was going to say, I think the most I ever put in was like maybe like 500 hours in the Pokemon Emerald. Yeah. But no. I that- I'm talking four about like, years. yeah, I'm talking about like four years of like playing. Put on your big boy pants. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, ladies Almost and gentlemen. exclusively that. Um, yeah. So that's the thing is, is uh, so that's the reason strong. that's why it's the top of my not top tens, not top tens. And which the reason it's not in the top 10 is because um, it's the same reason as a lot of these other ones where I did replay it recently and it does does hold up. It is a lot of fun. But it's like, it's again, it's just really stiff. Like, I don't know. It's as much fun as I have with it. It feels very limited in that like. I just what I would do is I would replay instant action over and over again against AI bots. And that was fun. And it still is fun. It still is fun. I can confirm it. I bought both games. Yeah. And they were doing that. Uh, what? The May 4th. 
sale yes. or whatever. Yeah, they had the May the Fourth sale, uh, and I bought them all for PC, and that's all I did. And you know what? It was fantastic. Yeah. So that game is it has an interesting story. It's old canon. It's legends, but it is interesting. And yeah, the whole the class system. It was like the best class based shooter, which has like gone away now. <laughs> that's not a that's not a thing any longer. And that they made um, Lord of the Rings Conquest, which is like identical to Battlefront, but in Lord of the Rings context where instead of guns, you have mostly melee. And that game is also a lot of fun. The reason why Battlefront 2 was on here and not Lord of the Rings Conquest is just because, again, I played Battlefront 2 for like four years, whereas Lord of the Rings Conquest came out on the 360 and I did not play it nearly as much. But that game is also a ton of fun. I love both of those games probably about equally, um, which is why I wanted to bring up Lord of the Rings Conquest here. They're so good. Yeah, but uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, ton of fun. I mean, I've taught other people how to play video games on that game just because it's amazing co-op experience. You can pick it up and play it with other people and uh, it's simple and there's a lot of just i don't know it, it's very simple it's very basic it's pretty early third person shooter game and so it's one of those games where the concept is like i guess universal throughout time you're gonna have a good time yeah yeah so it just worked and it just, like it just works and nothing's done that sort of thing it's it's all based around capture point system which i think they've tried doing in the new battlefront but they even made it weird well, by I mean, like uh battlefield and Call of Duty with their... You capture points, but you, like, earn points for capturing those points, right? Whereas in Battlefront well, 2... I like the way Battlefield did it. Like, Battlefield okay. 1 with the Conquest is that you had one big map, and then as you captured a point long enough and you moved, you, like, pushed into another map. Like, it would be, like, loading second map or whatever. So that's in Battlefront 2, the, the new one. The EA's Battlefront 2, they have a system where yeah. one person tries to, like, capture, the other tries to defend or whatever. Yeah. But that's the thing. What I think... Battlefront 2 is done that no one else has done except for Lord of the Rings Conquest is that capturing a point. No, not even Lord of the Rings Conquest. Even Lord of the Rings Conquest didn't do this. In Battlefront 2, capturing a point doesn't give you any winning advantage. It gives you exclusively, excuse me, exclusively strategic advantage in that now your enemy has less places they can spawn from and there's less areas you have to aim towards. Yeah. And so that's what I love about that game is that a main portion is to capture the points, but like you can win by capturing all the points and that will not allow your enemy to spawn. <laughs> Like, yeah. they could have more units than you do. You could have killed them less times. But if they can't spawn, then they can't win. Yeah. And so it's just a really cool game. Whereas, like, winning becomes more of a game of strategy than it does a game of, like, actual shooty, shooty, kill, yeah. kill. Uh, which is unique for a team-based multiplayer game like that. To explain, like, when you start a match, it'll say, like, you have, like, 200 people. Yes. Or whatever. And then, like, as you play, of course, you will die. And so will your bots. And then your number will go down. And if it hits zero, then you lose the match. But yes. alternatively... Like he's saying, uh, and there you is get, points to capture. Yeah, and you get less spawns when you get down to like, whatever, there's like 10 people per team. And if you've only nine spawns left, like those nine people are nine people on the map and someone's not spawning in. <laughs> like, yeah. That's how it works. Like, it's like, when it gets down to the wire, it's like, you know, sometimes like one person could just hide and then you're like, okay, well, we have to force uh, a capture victory then because like we can't, you know, it's easier to do that than to hunt down this one guy who's like hiding in a corner waiting to kill, pick everyone off. Right. And so, so it's just cool. It's just like the game's... But in the meantime, that guy's secretly been across the map trying to capture something in exactly. the very back. Yeah, exactly. Very... Whereas like every every multiplayer game that's come out since then has been more focused on like skill based where yeah. it's like shoot it and kill and do it better than everyone else. Whereas like Battlefront 2 is like the only game ever multiplayer that's like, ex like very, very strategy based where it's like, no, like if fighting someone could get you killed, you might be better off avoiding the engagement and try to do something that strategically helps your team. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like complexity through simplicity. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very, very cool. interesting. So that's my number 11. Um, Which concludes our 11 through 20 list. That concludes our 11 through 20 list. This was a lot of fun. We will do our 1 through 10. Hopefully it'll come out pretty soon here, but it's been fun. Again, uh, thank you so much for to Master Mostfa. <laughs> yeah, they they took them down because I am grounded. Yes, and uh, what? Duh, they, duh, they. they took them down, whatever. Um, that's disturbing. Thank you for listening. Hopefully you listened to the whole thing. How long has this been? Um, this current recording, I'm sure there's stuff to be bit, you know, pieced out, but what we're up what, one hour and 35 minutes, 30 seconds. Gee, mini. Yeah. Jupiter joy. Yeah. So oh, hopefully I forgot to hit that dang old record button. Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you stuck around. Um, I'm going to, of course, have a table of contents at the bottom. I would understand if you skip this whole video because most people aren't into like, yeah, what is there 11 through 20? But whatever. It's a fun it's a fun. <laughs> it's a fun. So I, I, I don't know. I really, I really like doing this. I'm glad we got this opportunity. I learned some stuff about Adam and his favorite games that I did not know at all, especially Mega Man X. Yeah. And, uh, and I got to put, you know, my own games out there. That are <laughs> Pants off dance. <laughs> my favorite game. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Also, I don't have Octodad on this list. There's another game I really like. Was so that okay. in? Was that, was that supposed to be in the top twenty? <laughs> I, mean, I like Octodad, but no. Um, Nobody suspects a thing. 
Nobody suspects a thing. Yeah, like I also don't have Valiant Hearts the Great War, which is a game I love to talk about. But Really? Yeah, I love telling people about that, even though it's not one of my top 20. I don't know. I have this weird trauma where every time I hear Hearts, I think of Kingdom Hearts. No, Valiant Hearts so, the Great War is fun. And before you <laughs> say, like, I don't even play the games, Harley again has made me sit down. <laughs> I've played the games, It's okay? his fault. It's, it's his fault. Yeah, it's his fault. Okay, thank you so much. Please. You've been fantastic. You've been fantastic. You, if you're around this long, you're you're good. You're yeah, good. Yeah, if you're around this, you. you might as well. If you've listened this long, then you probably already have liked and or commented, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So thank we, you. I don't think we need to, we need to say thank you for we that. We need yeah. to say thank you. Yeah, we, if you've probably already said something, already commented, yeah. you've probably already subscribed. Yeah, you're the so, reason this channel yeah. is as successful yes. and wonderful it's as it is. It's always been you. It's never been me. It's only Patrick even. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> sometimes he lets that one lackey he has adam show up on the show <laughs> it's only at the most important times <laughs> yeah um but yes i need you to hold the camera <laughs> <laughs> adam you know what your job is. Get yeah. to it. but um we got to this this took way too long being friends is terrible for our recording time it is but uh Life again terrible for recording glad glad to do this um so glug, glug, glug. until the next part or the next episode you watch or whatever else we have tons of stuff on the channel and the more you watch the happier we are to hear about it just please don't drink and drive sure yeah definitely okay well with that I, I don't know what else to tell the the they're already subscribed commented and liked. like <laughs> i don't i gotta like think of other be things safe to do. you've uh, yeah. have a great day yeah have a great next time have a great however long uh, if you're not in the americas and no civil war has popped off then we'll see you next time i feel like that's yeah <laughs> isn't it i mean this must be crazy for like I, I saw these memes recently where it was like like you know a european guy like laying in the field i think it was like mr bean specifically laying okay. in the field and it's just captioned like waiting for the u.s to explode <laughs> yeah so uh whatever it's it's great zoink out zoink in Zoink me all about and do, I deserve every joke every single time. It's not. It's not good anymore.